Mapping your data is a great way to find patterns hiding inside. We are now going to be using the software package QGIS to make a map of trees in Athens. The software that we're using to build our maps is called QGIS. The GIS in this stands for Geographic Information Systems, and it's the technical term for doing mapping. You can download QGIS for free from QGIS.org. You just click the download button, scroll down to the one that's right for you, and download it. There are multiple versions, 3.10, 3.4. It really doesn't matter which one you install. It will end up being the same in the end. After you've downloaded QGIS, you then need geographic data. There are a few different types of geographic data, but usually you're going to be downloading it from somewhere on the internet. In our case, for Greek geographic data, you might think to go to the official geodata portal for the Greek government. Oddly, the data we're working with today doesn't actually come from this portal. Instead of geodata.gov.gr, we're actually going to be using data.gov.gr. We're going to be using three different data sets, one data set of trees, one data set of roads, and one data set of neighborhoods. We will be combining these three different data sets to both do visualization and then later to do a little bit of analysis. Now when you download these files, they come as zip files. For example, let me open up trees.zip. Instead of just one file here, we have one, two, three, four, five, six different files. And it's going to be the same for each one of these. Instead of just a single file representing our neighborhoods or our roads or our trees, we end up with many, many files. Now the reason is because when you have geographic data, it's often very complex and there are a lot of different elements at play. You need the shape of the roads, the names of the roads, you need to figure out where they go on the map, and in order to make this happen successfully, you end up with many, many different files. The one that's important, though, is this SHP file. It's called a shape file. When people talk about geographic data, they usually are just referring to the shape file. They will say, send me the shape file, can you find a shapefile? Download the shapefile. And even though the one they're interested in is this .shp, you need these other files as well in order to make the SHP do its job. So what we want to do now is inside of QGIS, we need to add our shapefiles. We need to add our geographic data. There are two different ways to do this. Uh, one of them is from QGIS. We will go to Layer, Add Layer, and then Add Vector Layer. Almost every time you're going to be adding data to QGIS, you're going to be adding a vector layer. Things like images, background images, uh, you might end up using a raster layer. Things like satellite views, things like that are rasters. But for something like roads, neighborhoods, anything that's lines or shapes, you will be adding a vector layer. So because we have a shape file, this is going to be a vector layer. So layer, add layer, add vector layer. We will then browse to where our vector data set is. And what they mean by that is, where is your shape file? So we're going to click these three dots over here to browse. And then I will start off with, let's say, adding my trees. Now, as we've talked about before, even though there are six different files, the file that's important to me is the shape file. So I'm going to pick this shape file. I'm going to click Open. And then I'm going to click Add. It seems like nothing happened on this screen right here. But if we click Close, we'll see, oh, something has shown up here. This is a layer. 
when you're dealing with geographic data, you end up stacking different layers on top of each other. In this case, we're going to have one layer that's trees, one layer that's roads, and then one layer that is neighborhoods. You'll see what that means in a little bit. So that was the first way that we can add a layer. The next way is if you simply browse to the shape file and double click it, there you go. Our roads just got added right on top of our trees. And now we'll do the same thing for our neighborhoods, our final shape file. Just going to double click it or even drag it over to QGIS and it will automatically place them. Notice that right now I can't see my roads and I can't see my trees. This is because these are called layers for a reason. They are layered on top of each other. And because the neighborhoods actually take up space and are colored in, they will cover up our trees. So what we need to do is put them underneath our trees so that our trees are on top of our neighborhoods. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to click the neighborhoods and drag them down to being below the trees. We can also see that our roads are a little bit on top of our trees, so we're also going to drag our roads underneath our trees. So there we go. Looks delightful. Now if I want to zoom in or zoom out, there are tools up here that will allow me to do that. Zoom in. I can click and click and click, and I'll zoom in and zoom in and zoom in. And so now we can see trees going alongside the roads. If I want to zoom out, I can click the minus and click, 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 click to zoom out. If I want to zoom to a specific area, I can take the zoom in tool, click and drag, and it will zoom me in to a specific area. Let's say that I accidentally zoom out and zoom out and zoom out, and then I use this tool here, which allows me to click and drag my map, and I end up far, far, far away, and I can't see anything on my map at all. In order to return to where I was before, let's say to the trees layer, I will right-click my trees layer and select zoom to layer it will automatically move me right back to where my trees are. 